Now, this, like I said, doesn't look very good. Obviously, the quality settings are way too low. So let's take a look at the headache-inducing and oftentimes frustrating act of getting your, uh, your, your rendering settings to where you want them to be. Now, in my previous tutorial, I kind of went over everything, but I didn't really get too much into IDL. So this time, let's take a look here. First and foremost, Carrera uses a method of indirect lighting called photon mapping. This is different from radiosity that you would find in a program like VIEW or Mental Ray. Photon mapping basically takes the entire IDL solution and stores it in a photon map, or a, as Carrera would call it, in a radiance map. And your rendering settings here are basically a way of controlling the complexity, the accuracy, and the quality of the photon map. In other words, if you feed more information into Carrera, it will give you a better looking render, a better looking photon map, but it'll take a lot longer. So before you start beating yourself over the head, what you're going to want to do is, first of all, look at how bad does this initial render really look, and then start making subtle increases in the quality a little bit at a time until you get what you want. So for example, in this scene, because it doesn't look that bad, I'm going to take the precision and I'm going to turn it up to, let's say, 40%. This is the balance between what Career is guessing at and what it's actually calculating. Improved edges, you pretty much never want to use this. <laughs> because if it warns you that it's slow, then dear God is, is going to be slow. Again, light through transparency is not necessary on this scene because there's no glass. Photon count is, you know, how much lighting information are you giving career to work with. 5,000 is actually really low. Um, 10,000 is usually a good number to start with. In this case, let's say 15,000. Photon map accuracy is pretty self-explanatory. I'll crank that up to, let's say, 20%. Lighting quality is just an over overall, across the board, increase to your quality. I'll change it from fast to good. And the accuracy is basically how big of a bite is Carrera going to take at a time. And I'll say 4 pixels. Now, <clears throat> right now this is probably going to take a couple minutes to render, so I'm not going to make you sit through it. But I am going to say that if it still didn't look good, then you'd want to go through and take the precision up to, let's say, 50%. Take the photon count up to 20,000, increase the accuracy up to 30%, maybe turn the uh, lighting quality from good to excellent, and then try it again. If you're getting to the point where you know, you've got the precision up to 75%, you're using 50,000 photons, and you've got the accuracy up to like 60 or 70%, you've got this set to best, and you're still not getting good results, chances are there's something wrong with your scene, and you need to go back into the assembly room and <clears throat> find out what the problem is. Usually, if, if, if your results are not what you want, you're going to want to try to basically add another light or two, like in this scene, you know, maybe a low-level bulb somewhere in the room to give Carrera a little bit more to work with. Another option would be to use two spotlights instead of one distant light for the sunlight because, again, you're giving Carrera a little bit more to go by. And... As far as this basic scene is concerned, that's really all there is to it. If you're, like I said, if you're new to Carrera, you basically just have to accept that you're going to have to spend a day or two messing around with the settings, and I promise you that in time you'll be able to anticipate how much information Carrera is going to need to give you the results that you want. And just a couple of quick pointers before I wrap this up. This room that I'm using here is actually ideal for indirect lighting because, for one thing, I've got the walls and the floor and the ceiling all as separate objects, which is very important if I wanted to add an extra spotlight, let's say, and just isolate it to one wall that's not turning out. I can do that because they're all separate. And secondly, let me go over to the vertex modeler here. <clears throat> you can see that I actually have a lot of geometry going on here. If you're using a lot of poser sets, for example, 
you're going to find out that more geometry is actually better when it comes to indirect lighting because any artifacting or problems that you're going to have are going to be distributed over each polygon. And if this floor was just one polygon, those problems would be a heck of a lot more noticeable than they are now. And finally, the other nifty thing is that, let me go over here. You can see that there's some thickness to my walls. Again, if you're relying heavily on poser sets, you'll notice that a lot of the walls in, in poser architecture are actually just planes instead of actual cubes. This is going to cause some problems in terms of light leak. It's going to cause some artifacting. So having some thickness to your walls if you're designing your own sets is a must. You undo that. And that's really about all there is to it. Like I said, this is a... Uh, a very powerful feature of Carrera. It takes some time to get used to it. But as you can see, it can produce some really good results. If you're doing an outdoor scene, for example, you're probably going to want to stay away from using IDL because it's really not going to do that much for you. There's no walls for the light to bounce around in, so there's really no point in it. So in the end, let me just say that you know this is something you're going to want to think about. You, you, if you really want to use it in terms of rendering time, it's obviously not practical for animation. But it is a, uh, a very interesting and, like I said, powerful tool from Carrera. So if you have any questions, drop me a line at Renderosity under JT411. And again, my name is Jim T-Shirt, and thank you for watching my tutorial. Good night.